Today, I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to create a business email with Google. Let's jump in. We're going to start by opening up our browser and going to workspace.google.com. Now, as you look through the home page here, it's going to show you all the advantages of Google Workspace. And I'm also going to put a link in the description here so you can just head right to it over that way. And then as you scroll down, it's going to give you a list of plans that are available and some of the different features that go along with each of those plans. Now, today we're going to be talking about primarily how to set up a business email, meaning that it's going to be your name at yourbusiness.com or .org or whatever that is. But as you'll see as you scroll through this, when you sign up for a Google Workspace account, Account, it's going to give you all the features and functions that come along with Google Workspace or the Google ecosystem, like Google Drive and Google Meet and a lot of the other features that way. So a lot of the differences between the plans have to do with the storage on the Google Drive has to do with some of the tools and integrations between Google Meet and some of the AI tools that are built into that and that sort of thing. So if you're just interested in getting a Google email, the starter kit would work just fine. But if you're looking for some of those other features that go along with the workspace, you might want to look at some plans as you go up. Now, this also depends on how many people you have on your team. As you see, these prices are based on how many users you have. So it's going to be that price per user. So if it's just you and your business, it's just going to be that amount for per month. If you have two or three employees, then you just have to multiply that by how many employees that you have that you are assigning a specific email to. So I'm just going to start with the starter kit and we're going to click on get started here. And from here, it's just going to ask you a few questions. It's going to ask you for your business name, how many employees you have. And again, this is how it's going to set up your mailboxes. You as setting this up, it's going to ask you for your contact information here. And then when you come to this screen, you're going to have two options. You can either get a custom domain name, meaning if you're just starting out and you don't even have a website or you don't have that domain name of yourbusiness.com or .org, .us, whatever it is. Or if you already have that, step or you you've secured that domain through another service you can go to this next option which is set up using existing domain there will be an additional price associated with that if you're purchasing the domain through google versus if you already have the domain meaning you're already purchasing that as well so in my case i already have the domain so i'm going to go up set up through existing domain i'm going to continue and then they're just going to ask you for the domain or if you're setting up a brand new domain, you would be entering that information in there of what you want it to be. And then it's going to confirm that this is the domain that you want to use for your domain. So now any email that I set up in Workspace will be the name of the person, andycano.com. And again, in your case, it would be, you know, Bob at bobsplumbing.com or whatever your business is, okay? So we're gonna click next. And then it's going to ask you to create a username and password. This is how you'll sign into the account. So when you click on that, you can see it's saying at andycano.com. So that's going to be what your email will look like. So in my case, I'm just gonna use my name and then it'll ask you to add a password. Then it has its terms of service. You can look through those and go agree and continue. The business starter seems to be their recommended version. And again, depending on how you answer some of those questions might be different for you. You also have the option to try it for free for 14 days. So you can try it out, make sure you like it before you have to make any payments. So I'm gonna do that option there. And as you can see, it is gonna ask you for a payment method to get started so that once your 14 day trial is up, that it will charge you then. So if you have additional team members or coworkers that you want to add, and give them their own email address at this stage, you can add their information here, give them their own username at your company name. Then you'll put in their current email address and Google Workspace will email them and give them the instructions to set up their account and their password and their sign and all of that. But if you don't have any additional users that you wanna add at this point, you can just skip this for now. So in my case, it's just me, so I'm gonna go skip for now. And then it says we need to set up your domain, okay? So first it's gonna verify that I own that domain. So it's gonna verify that you own that domain because I didn't purchase this through Google. And then once I verify that, then it's gonna allow me to start using that. So we'll just click get started. So in order to verify, it's going to ask you where your domain is hosted. So that's where you purchase your domain from. So that you know, it might be Squarespace or GoDaddy or 
Shopify or WordPress, whatever that is, you'll select that. In my case, it's Squarespace. And then you click continue. Now at this step, you're gonna have to add some verification codes to your domain hosting. This is the part that seems a little intimidating, but Google Workspace really makes this pretty simple. So you can just walk through these steps, okay? So we're just gonna go to Squarespace here. And again, this step might be a little bit different for you depending on where your domain is hosted or if you just purchased it through Google. So I am just gonna sign into my Squarespace account here and you wanna go over wherever it says DNS listings and you wanna go into here. Now, basically what you're going to need to do is add these records. You're gonna add a TXT record and it'll be that information and then you'll add a CNAME record and it'll be that ver information. Now in Squarespace, and I think a lot of the hosting sites, you can add a preset. So if you click on add preset, it'll allow you to add a Google Workspace verification. So it'll do all that work for you. So we're gonna click on that. And then it's asking you to add the verification code. So we're gonna go back to the codes that they sent you and you want this data code here. So we're gonna click copy. We're gonna bring that back over there and we're just gonna paste it right here and go add and Google Workspace has been added, okay? Now you can go back to your domain information. So then down here at the bottom, it says come back here once you've confirmed your domain host. So we're gonna say click there, and we're gonna say confirm. And then it just takes a few seconds to confirm and then it'll pop up here to say your domain is verified. So basically that's just having Google Workspace get permission from your domain hoster to use that as an extension on the email, okay? And then from there, you just wanna start using Gmail with your domain. So we're gonna activate Gmail and it's gonna have you set up Gmail to send and receive emails. We're gonna click continue. And here again, this is the user that we set up for ourselves, Andy at andycano.com. And that could be admin, that could be info, whatever you want that to do. Proceed with activation. And now to add your Gmail activation, you're basically gonna repeat these steps with these new MX records, okay? So we're gonna go back to Squarespace. Unfortunately, there's not a preset for this one, so we're gonna add these codes in manually. I'm just gonna go down here to Custom Records. We're gonna go Add Record. So first we're gonna go over here to Type and change this to MX. And then Host, it says Set to Default, but we have to have something in there, so we're just gonna type At. And then we go back here and the priority is one. So we're gonna add one. And then the TTL says set to default or lowest value. So we're gonna go over here and the lowest value is 30 minutes. And then we have the data here, which is the key information. And we're just gonna add that into the mail server. And once you have all those plugged in, you just click save. And then once you have that information in here, we're just gonna go to confirm and it's going to verify your information. And if that doesn't process right away, like I said, it could take up to 48 hours for that information to go through. And you'll just have to check back later to make sure that once that's connected. So we're just gonna open up another window here and go to Google Workspace Admin and click on that. And then it's gonna ask you to choose your account. This is the one we just set up, the andycanode.com. Click on that gonna ask for the password that you just created, click next. And then it's gonna say, welcome to your new account, some information to approve. And then you are in to your workspace. So as you can see, it's still waiting to activate that Gmail. And again, that may take a little bit of time and then that will refresh. And then here you can manage users. So like I said at the beginning that you could add additional users at that point, or you can add users here. So again, each time you add a new user to your workspace, it'll be an additional charge per month. However, I'll give you a little bonus tip here. If it's just you, but you want multiple emails, like maybe you want sales at your company name or admin at your company name so that you're not always using your name or you can separate sort of your accounts that way, you can go into your, your user, and this works for any of your users, and you can add alternate emails. So if you click on this, you can now add, for example, info at andycanode.com, right? And you click save. And now anytime somebody emails that email address, it'll go into my primary box, but it kind of keeps things separately. And with that, you're up and running with your own Google business email. I hope this was helpful and I will see you in the next one.